What's going on guys? So I'm here with the amazing Roxanne Williams with Full Sack Talent. Yeah, and so she's actually like gonna interview me for a blog piece that they're doing and yeah, you guys are just gonna watch the experience. But. <laughs> so we've been kind of doing like a interview series with tech leaders slash marketing leaders and companies and you are amazing, so. <laughs> At least I'm not the only one saying it anymore. <laughs> Do you want to just dive right into it? Yeah, let's go awesome. right in. So I first met you at Startup where you delivered an amazing talk on digital marketing to a completely packed house. I'd like to know what got you involved in Startup Week. So it was actually like through Instagram. Duh. Yeah, so okay. Allie hit me up. Like she started following me like probably like six months before Startup Week. And she just like loved my content and she was like, hey, I'm one of the organizers at Startup Week. I'm like, I don't even know what that is, but that sounds really <laughs> cool. And she's like, yeah, I'd love for you to give a talk. And I was just like, okay, cool. My life just like kept going on. I saw that Gary Vaynerchuk was going to be there. So I followed up with her and I was like, hey, are we still like on to do this? Like, <laughs> can I still give a talk? She's like, hell yeah. And so that's what led to that. Nice. Are you going to be participating this year? Yeah, I think so. I hope so. <laughs> I don't know. They just kind of hit me up. <laughs> well, you seem to be super passionate about the entrepreneurial space in Tampa. Can you speak to your involvement in the community? Any meetups or events that you regularly attend? Yeah, um, regularly, not really, but I host them. Oh. So I'm partnered with an app called Startup Space. So our mission is to unite the world's entrepreneurs with resources at a local to a global scale so that we can all revolutionize the world together. So like we host like meetups, like for example, like two weeks ago, I did a meetup on like how to grow a wildly profitable Instagram. And that was cool. We did it at the ECC right here in Ebor. Nice. And for that, I did a talk at SPC that was also on meetups. Um, and it was like, what is digital marketing? Yeah. That's awesome. So that's how I'm contributing to the community, I feel like. I actually did have a question about Startup Space because you just started that project a few weeks ago, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> can you tell us a little bit more, like, what is your full involvement with it? Um, yeah, so I'm pretty much like a digital marketing partner. I'm like one of the advisors right now. Okay. Um, so pretty much we're like in a growth hack the app. Like that's what we're in the process of doing. By reaching out to influencers, having them demo the app and sharing it with their audience. We're gonna be at Web Summit in Lisbon, Portugal. When is that? That's the first week of November. So I have an actual, I have an event in Puerto Rico I have to go to on the 24th or the 23rd, which is called Disrupt Week, which is super cool. Cryptocurrency, all like tech stuff. And like my boy, his name's Anthony Delgado. Um, he is like big in the tech scene in New York and he's Puerto Rican. So he decided to move out and like, and like bring more value to this to the island and like empower their people um especially since like the whole hurricane thing happened and like it was crazy um but anyway so i'm doing that <laughs> and then from there i'm going straight to italy to spend some time with my mom for like a week and then i'm going straight to portugal and then back to italy and then i probably won't be back until january when we have to go to ces oh my gosh yeah wow so that's, that's awesome <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome wow um what is it about marketing itself that you're so passionate about so it's actually like I wouldn't even say marketing I would say it's building relationships cuz so like this is what I've realized through like my consulting journey and like just like doing shit no business really has a marketing problem they have like a personal problem that reflects inside their business which is like crazy so like when my business started to like struggle like this year like I, I still can't figure out how to scale to um, 150k a month like I can't figure it out um, even though I have friends that are doing it and they're like killing it and I'm just like what's wrong with me because when you're the CEO, it's what's wrong with you. Like you control everything. So if you're, if something bad is happening, it's because of you. So I've been doing like a lot of personal development stuff, which is actually why I'm gonna go see my mom and like work things out. We're gonna go do ayahuasca together. Like literally, like do a shitload of. Yeah, ayahuasca is this like drug. Uh, it's not a drug. <laughs> <laughs> it's this um, so Peruvian <laughs> and um in like Peruvian culture, like the yeah. Incans, um they would take ayahuasca like they're shamans and they would like see the future or like get purge all their like huh. limiting beliefs or like whatever traumas in their past lives they've had or whatever and my mom is like my tony robbins like i just found out who tony robbins was this year and like i realized holy shit my mom is my tony <laughs> like it's weird <laughs> but like so my mom left me when i was seven with me and my dad and like didn't really spend much time with her besides like forced time like from 14 to like 17. Okay. Um, like a month in Italy that's that's it but now I'm like willingly wanting to go spend time with her and like work shit out you know but yeah I don't really know where I was going with this <laughs> <laughs> uh, personal development oh yeah <laughs> so yeah we're gonna go do ayahuasca together nice. and um work shit out so yeah and that's how it goes back to like no one really has marketing problems they have like relationship building problems or like personal problems that just reflect yeah. in their business mm -hmm. so I'm just like I love psychology even though like not like I never like graduated with a degree in psychology but like when I did go to school like my favorite classes was ethics and psychology and sociology 
Like, I just love understanding what makes people tick and like what I have to do, how many times do I have to touch you for you to take out your wallet and pay for something, hmm. you know? Yeah. So that's how I love marketing this. <laughs> well, actually, this kind of ties in perfectly because my next question was, have you ever gotten a bit burned out on what you do? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> totally. So, yeah, specifically this year, super burned out for like two months. Like these past two months, I've really struggled because like mentally, I just, I didn't want to deal with whatever issues and like it, when, when I tell people that, because they ask me, um, they're like, well, you seem so, like, strong, yep. and, like, yeah, and, like, I am strong, and so are you, and so is everybody, but, like, I'm vulnerable, too, like, I can't be strong 24-7, you know what I'm saying? And, like, people have seen that play out through my social, like, I had problems with my dad, like, he didn't invite me to his birthday party, like, like yeah, and, like, he lives here, it's not like my mom, it's, you know what I'm saying? So, this is stupid stuff, um... And it's crazy how everything reverts back to your childhood and how you were raised. Yeah. And it's just been a struggle having to erase your the beliefs that you were like believing for like 20 years of your life. It's hard, and yeah. like it's really hard to build habits. And so that's why. I, so like the reason why I'm actually doing this vlog is because like I understand that if I'm trying to accomplish something, I will self sabotage myself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So if I don't, if I take away all the back doors of me not being able to like back out, like I'm golden. Like I'll get to that goal. You know what I'm saying? So like this helps me work out. This helps me stay on track of my work. This is because I have to be real. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like I genuinely want a lifestyle change, and if I have to document the entire journey, I will. Parsing all the bullshit away, taking the walls down. Exactly. Accountability. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> That's good. That's good. We're getting the raw lore today. Hell yeah, <laughs> always. Um, so you actually posted a video earlier today about time as a commodity, respecting your time instead of blowing through it. Um, I wanted to see if you could walk us through an average date for you. How do you make sure you accomplish everything you set out to do? And do you have any advice for procrastinators out there and people who may be wasting too much time? Oh yeah, all right, so this is how you gotta do it. <laughs> um, you have to chunk out your days. And before you even do that, you have to figure out what you're trying to accomplish for that month. And then chunk that out into weeks. And then chunk that out into days. And baby then, steps. But super baby steps yeah. because if not like personally, I felt like it was just too much. Mm -hmm. Like shit. And I just like got stuck, like I got paralyzed because I was so intimidated. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I was like, how can I not make myself intimidated? Um, so it's like the tiny little things I have to do. So get a calendar. Like like literally plan every single part of your day out. Like for example, I use um, Grant Cardone's planners. Um, the 10x planners it's literally every hour of the day that you just like write out and at the same time you write what you're doing for the day and then you set your goals on the right side and you have to set them twice one at the beginning of the day one at the end of the day and in the middle it's what you accomplished throughout the day um, and then you put a quote that you're doing for that day you know what wow. I'm saying it's like super awesome um, and that helps me a lot and like when it comes to like business I would say so the thing I just started implementing was I don't do calls throughout the week anymore um, because my mind's not ready like I've realized like my mind is not performing at its best when I'm doing sales calls If I'm at the same time like trying to write a new blog post or something, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like figuring out what type of content I'm gonna put on social um, So I'm blocking just like two specific days just for calls hmm. Okay, and I'm focused on just calls. My only objective is to land a client. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, um, so block that out per days um, and then like and focus on my business for a couple of those another days and then focus on myself another day that's what I was super lacking on focusing on myself like I would go days without sleeping like I would just go like I wouldn't sleep like it, oh, it was geez. ridiculous it was super ridiculous and I can't do that anymore like yeah. it's not cool <laughs> like, it's oh you gotta put yourself first yeah, yeah. they don't teach you that no. <laughs> what are three things that every company should be doing marketing wise oh man three things every company should be doing okay creating content mm -hmm. one thing and not just like a blog post like creating video content all types of content um, for all types of social and creating it specifically for the platform it's for mm. does that make sense yeah yeah so those are two things what else should they be doing engaging so understanding exactly who their ideal customer is and putting that content in front of that ideal customer not just waiting for them to come to them because it's not gonna happen you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Any specific things that companies with a very low marketing budget can do, like potentially free ideas? Um, content creation is free. Yeah, content creation is free. Um, free though. Uh, 
there's no way to really scale free. <laughs> <laughs> you just start off really low like that, and then when you can't afford it, Facebook ads. Yeah, um, but like I scaled my business without Facebook ads, and I sell Facebook ads. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's it's not about Facebook ads. It's about like hacking attention. That's what it's about. Like, if I like, for example, one of the strategies I did was I put up a case study, and I like took a picture of the title of the case study, and I posted it on it on my Instagram account, and then I used hashtags to find my ideal clients. So like hashtags that they were using, that they were looking at. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And then I posted that, and then they clicked on the link in my bio, and went straight to my case study, went through my funnel, and then booked a call. Nice. And that's that's I was that's not free though, so, but like that's it's very cheap. Very cheap. Very yeah, cheap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing. I mean, you gotta work for it. <laughs> so I don't. I don't know about free. So I already know your answer to this, but I want everybody else to hear it. Facebook ads versus Google ads. It depends. I both. Really? Both. Oh, um, I thought for sure you would have said Facebook ads. Yeah. No. Totally. I love Facebook ads, <laughs> but I also love YouTube ads. Um, Google AdWords, no. <laughs> but YouTube Display Network, like all that shit, yes. Um, so the way this really works is like YouTube or Google is search, right? Yeah. Google actively searching for something, okay? So if I can get that person, whatever, I'll pay for the AdWord, to get to my page, I'm pixeling them with Facebook too. Like I'm, yeah. I have every retargeting shit on my site, you know? <laughs> and if I'm running an ad, I'm going to hit you. And I'm going to keep hitting you until you do something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And if you don't, you'll eventually get like opted out of my funnel, my sales funnel that I'm doing, but it's, they're, they're all worth it, you know what I'm saying? But you're gonna, if you do it right, you're gonna get a lot more ROI off of Facebook ads. Just out of curiosity, what's your timing for death on a customer? Um, like my LTV, for me? Yeah. Uh, it can be anywhere from like 6 to 12 months. Uh, oh wow. We're trying okay. to make that longer. Um, through just consulting. So what we're doing is really like setting them up for six months. We set them up with all the tools and then they take over after the first the six months. Um, and then we're just consulting. Okay. And because like every time something new comes up on Facebook, like they have to come to me. I'm the authority there, you know? So that's why like consulting plays out better for me. Okay. So I'm sure you um, read about the whole like Facebook will no longer be able to discriminate in ad targeting like that is specifically for job posting and stuff, but has, has it affected ads at all? They've been doing that. Um, that's like not that new. Really? Yeah. I just heard about that like a month ago. No, nah, they've been doing that. So I remember when you used to be able to like say like you could target ethnicity. Mm. Yeah. I've been doing Facebook well. ads for a minute. <laughs> but yeah, nah, they've been whatever. Like it's not a big deal. Like you can't, now you can't even target by like credit cards. Like you used to be able to do that. Holy cow. Yeah, like you can't like ask about like credit scores or anything. But that's okay. a good industry. Yeah, the latest I read was it was stuff like you can't choose whether you show a job posting to male only, like women. Oh, that is that yeah, what you mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That doesn't impact your ads at all. Not me. Okay. No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when is it okay to take risks in marketing? Like, is there a specific time frame or money frame that you think it's okay to start, like, you know, going nuts on experimenting? I don't take risks. I take calculated risks. Um, so if I'm gonna go all in on one ad set and scale it up, it's because there has to be proof behind it. You know, I put five out and that's the one that won, and then I'm gonna scale. Does that okay. make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Okay. Um, you've done development. What are you programming? All right, so I <laughs> do Instagram bots. <laughs> like, yeah, that's what I code. Um, I do front end development more, but. I just got into Sketch, so like I'm doing like, yeah, Sketch is like um, front end for apps. Oh, that's yeah, cool. so that's like super cool. I'm just yeah. getting into it. Um, I'm super excited to learn about it. But yeah, it, when when it comes to like back end stuff, it's really just Python. I'm not really a back end developer. Yeah, not like a real one at least. <laughs> like that's something I would outsource. But when it comes to like creating things for myself, I hate outsourcing it because I want to learn the process. Yeah, but that's just me. Some people just want shit made, so. Mm. You're way more likely to end up with something you like if you do it yourself. Right. I agree. <laughs> Completely agree. You good on time? No, yeah, just LinkedIn gave me no. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so you're into crypto. What's your favorite coin? Um, I guess everybody's gonna want me to say Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, my favorite, favorite coin is Monero. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, I like Lesser known ones. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you intend on leveraging any other emerging techs such as AI and machine learning for your business? Yeah, already using artificial intelligence oh, and really? um, automation. Yeah. Dude, so no. <laughs> what we do, like literally what our like mission is, we help visionary entrepreneurs ethically scale and automate their businesses. 
Um, so we use chatbots. Like I'm telling you, chatbots is where it's at. Um, so we actually use ManyChat. We're huge fans of ManyChat. Um, they just had their conference in Austin. You know, super dope. Um, but yeah, so like, are you familiar with messenger bots? Yeah, yeah. With that, yes, but with many chat specifically, no. No, okay, so the open rates are ridiculous. Yeah. It's like email back in 97. <laughs> like, it's super awesome. Um, and so we, we have clients in the info product space um, that are always like releasing new, new courses or like they're just having like new webinars and stuff like that. Okay. Um, and the open rates they get is ridiculous. Like literally like 93%. Wow. And their opt-in rates are crazy. And then it just comes down to like having the right webinar to keep them entertained and then to purchase at the end. Hmm. Yeah, so it's awesome. Um, do you have any favorite resources when it comes to MarTech training? <laughs> um, resources, I mean Facebook Blueprint is good. Okay. Um, I feel like it really comes down to understanding the leaders in the industry. So for example, like what I learned from is Tim Bird. He's like one of he manages like multi millions of dollars a month in Facebook ads wow. and scales them. Um, so that's like one of my mentors. Um, Depeche is one of my mentors. He actually worked for Facebook and developed all that shit, um, and then went out and created his own ad agency. And like he manages millions and millions of dollars a month. Wow. I'm only at like a hundred k a month <laughs> that I'm managing, <laughs> oh, <wait>. but yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I just like I, I plug myself into the community. Like, I mean, I'm sure that's good for any type of industry, though, you know? Yeah. Like, you have to get plugged in. That's pretty much, uh, you know, Michael O'Rourke, right? Who? Crypto guy, Michael O'Rourke? No. Oh, we interviewed him, and he pretty much said the same oh, thing. Oh, Michael! Yeah, he yeah, created yeah. Banana Quest. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I have the stickers in my car. Nice. <laughs> awesome. I love him. Um, but we did an interview with him, and he had mentioned the same thing, like, with... It's, it's mostly about being on Twitter and following the right people to get like the latest news and training and all that. So, yeah, that's what yeah. I do when it comes to crypto. Like, yeah. And I have friends that manage $100 million hedge funds wow. like, in crypto. Um, like, for example, Chad Anderson, that's the homie. Um, he owns, I think it's called like Digital Mountain Assets or something like that. Okay. And, and it's a $100 million crypto hedge fund. Wow. Yeah. That's massive. Yeah. And what do you hope to see in the next few years in Tampa Bay when it comes to tech or in the entrepreneurial space? When it comes to tech, all right, so those for me are two completely separate really? subjects oh, yeah. in Tampa. And I love the entrepreneurial space. I, I think it's amazing. I think it's inclusive. I think it's better and we just need to get more people involved. That's the only thing I can say there. When it comes to tech, though, <laughs> um, I don't feel it's inclusive. I feel like it's very, like, posh, like, hmm. stuck up. I, I feel like. I don't know if anybody else feels that way. Um, but that's how I feel, and I feel like it can be a lot more inclusive. And we just need to—I feel like we just need to provide kids more resources with tech, like because the school systems aren't doing it. Yeah. You know, and like I'm telling you, as a troubled child, a MacBook Pro changed my life. Mm -hmm. Like seriously, a MacBook Pro and Sublime Text changed my life. Like, and if I can be that resource, like that's also why I got involved in startup space. It's—it's it's an online incubator. I, I'll teach you whatever, like. You know, and that's why I'm also recording my days, like, and what I have to give to people, you know, because, like, I can't keep this shit to myself. It's not, like, it's cool. It's not like it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> like, we got to share the knowledge, you know? Yeah. Because how else are we supposed to grow as a society? That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, who is a person or an organization that you think is doing something right in the area? Well, startup space is doing great things. <laughs> Uh, Startup Week. Startup Week. They're doing awesome things. I will tip my hat to Startup Week though. They do amazing. Amazing. Yeah, for the size of their events. Any further thoughts or insights you'd like to share? Anything exciting coming down the pipeline for yourself or for Five Tech? Well, we're doing Web Summit and we're doing CES. <laughs> and yeah, my life is exciting. I don't know. Like, you guys will watch the journey. Follow me on Instagram. <laughs> like, and you'll see everything that's happening. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of exciting things. I'm growing as a person. Like, it's like I'm definitely not the same person I was in February when I did um, Startup Week. Start week yeah. yeah, like at all. Like, <laughs> I like cringe watching myself. <laughs> like, it's it's crazy. I just want to empower people, and I would be super thankful if people want to watch that journey, and maybe like they get motivated to empower people too. You know? Yeah. Pay so, it forward. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. And that's it. <laughs> that was dope. That was really good.